welcome. I'm here with Dunya and Suleiman to talk about their book, Your Divine Gift of Well-Being. I'm very excited to talk to both of you. This is an exciting moment, isn't it? Very excited. <laughs> we've, we've, this is a, a, a few years in the building, a, a culmination of effort, is it? Well, in a way, yes. Um, I would say ever since uh, we probably were born, because it takes all those years, you know, to uh, to make you who you are, and all those, those experiences um, that we went through to be here. So that's wonderful. So yes. Yeah, I mean, every time I, we've spoken in the past, it's always been easy to talk about this because it comes from your heart and from your minds. I. Um, I should probably uh, uh, introduce you guys in a more form like a more thorough background. Granted, I know you, okay. but I don't think the audience may. So let's go ahead and just say, uh, let's just go ahead and just uh, let me give a backdrop real quickly. You guys are here together to discuss a book that you've written together. Is that correct? That's correct. And then the 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 title is Your Divine Gift of Well-Being. Am I correct in saying this? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, how long did it take you guys to write this, and, and, and what format is it currently available? Mm -hmm. So how long did it take us? Actually, I don't even know how long. Um, we actually been working uh, on many other books. So this was not a linear way of creating uh -huh. a book. It happened in between when we were creating other books, and uh, it was a short one. We just felt it's appropriate that it, we can start with this one as it is uh, an introduction to our work. Wonderful. Precursor to all our next uh, books that are coming. Mm -hmm. So how long did it take? I, I don't think that much. <laughs> it was more finding the courage to come out with it. That took longer than writing a book, I would say. I yeah. see the courage. Well, it certainly is yeah. courageous to get put yourself out there and but I think it's a wonderful, so I, I'm sure I'll allude to this, but the reason why you made this book will obviously be a discussion we will have, but for the time being, just to get the logistics and the details down, is it both an ebook and is it available in, in printed form too? So t tell us how to find this book, mm -hmm. your gift of well-being, so your divine gift. I apologize. <laughs> I don't want to mispronounce that's the title. Perfect. Uh, the book is going to be available uh, on our website in um, digital format only. Okay. For now, only digital format, so PDF or um, EPUB. EPUB. Yeah. Yes. Got it. And uh, that's for now. So later on, maybe the print version as well. Wonderful. But for now, that would be available on our website. And what is your website address? That would be www.lotsea.com. Lot C. Yes. Got it. Lot C dot com. Wonderful. And so um, I know the price is very affordable. I, I appreciate you guys doing that. It means that more people can have access to it. And so so who is this book for? Is this for people like myself um, who have never really gotten into this category of reading? Uh, <laughs> or is it more for people that are interested in <coughs> spiritual guidance? Who, who is this for? Can you... From what I understand it, the book is for anyone who's looking for meaning, looking for a purpose, and, um, and wanting to live with greater ease and higher understanding. So if you're asking questions about who, you, who am I, such as who am I, what am I here to do, am I infinite or limited, to this material plane, so this book is for you. It's wow. more of of an <coughs> introspection. It's for all of those who are who want to look inward, to look within, to find answers. And it's that. That's wonderful. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm still recovering from a cold. But um, and then uh, now. I would love to learn a little bit more about how your backgrounds took part and played into this book making. It's from what I've read the book and I understand it to be um, a mostly uh, guidance of a, uh, a spiritual nature. Uh, it's more of a, an attitude 
uh, adjustment for many people that may have not heard of anything like this before. And, um, but I find it fascinating that the both of you have a science and uh, l logical background. So can you give me a little bit of background as to what you did uh, mm -hmm. before these books? Yeah. So first of all, I would uh, probably many are wondering where is this accent <laughs> coming from. <laughs> so let me say that I was born and raised in Slovenia. Slovenia. Yes. And um, I was actually always interested in human body and in well-being, I would say. So that's why at that time what I chose was to you know, study microbiology first and then I finished my doctorate degree in molecular biology. Wow. So um, I finished that in Slovenia and um, after that um, I decided to come to this country. So to continue my career path here. And how, I was how old were you when you came here? Um, I was in my, I think, early 30s. Early 30s? Yeah. And how long does it take to get a, a PhD in molecular biology? <laughs> That's got to be w w many, many years. I don't think it's that many, so it depends. But yes. for me, yeah, it was, I think, good uh, five years, I would say. Uh, five years to yeah. get your, your PhD in molecular mm -hmm. biology. And so did you already have a job before you, grad uh, before you left? Slovenia or did you have a job w once you graduated and moved to the States? So I was first working in Slovenia. After that I moved for a short time to Heidelberg where I also worked. I worked in HIV so all this time all my work has always been on HIV. I was doing research on HIV. Can you say that again? HIV? Yes, virus. Right. Ah, okay. So virology was kind of the field where I used to work. Wow. And um, after Heidelberg, I then decided to come. I got an offer, and I came to um, United States. Actually, I came to Worcester. Um, and Worcester? Yeah, that was my first place down oh. where, where I landed <laughs> after coming. Uh, and I was working at um, University of Massachusetts yeah, oh, okay. at that time. So, and I was doing this work for quite some time, I would say, yeah, so more you were than fifteen. Researcher, or exactly, yeah, Got it. yeah, in science, yeah. And were you writing journal, journal entries? Yes, that, and that comes with it. It does. Yeah, it's yeah, part it of does. the world of science True. and research, and exactly. Wow. Yeah. So this was a huge change for me. Uh, I was very afraid to make this move and come. So living, you know, in a different across the ocean in a right. different <laughs> right. continent. Yeah. So it was quite a big change, and I was very afraid of it. But looking back, I'm very glad. Yeah, that I did that because it's really brought an amazing gift to me. Yeah. So here you are in your early 30s. You had just gotten your doctorate. You're working as a researcher, mm -hmm. and and you're in a new country. Exactly. And then, now how did you cross paths with this guy? <laughs> did you guys meet no. in Worcester? We actually, this is yeah, a very interesting and kind of a yeah, story that we are both coming from different continents. Right. I'm from Slovenia, he's from Senegal, and we ended up, you know, finding each other in Worcester, right? Wow. We both used to work at that time at uh, UMass, but also we happen to live in the apart uh, same apartment complex. So ah. that's the funniest part of it. And then we uh, used to take, you know, that little path to go to work because we uh, used to live very close to where we work. And uh, this is how we met, walking down the hill <laughs> to work. <laughs> this is how he introduced himself. And, well, you can say you're part of the <laughs> Wow. So you're being Story a gentleman. <laughs> You see a pretty girl walking down the street, you take yeah, the exactly. opportunity. Huh? No, that's amazing. So did you know anything about her before you introduced yourself? No. 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 You both were walking the same uh, Just walking, just and, and, and I said, good morning. And, uh, <laughs> she said, good morning back. She, had, uh, she was listening to music, and, and I introduced myself. Um, I am Suleiman. What's your name? Uh, oh, my name is Dunia. And I asked her where she was from. She said, Slovenia. I said, oh, I know your country. She said, wait, it's not Slovakia. I said, I know Slovakia too. So, <laughs> and because, um, you know, I said Slovakia was part of uh, former Czechoslovakia, but Slovenia was part of 
former Yugoslavia. So there are two different countries. So, <laughs> so your knowledge of this means <laughs> that you're a traveler. So what brought you to this point? How did you get to this tiny little neighborhood walking down the hill to meet Dunya? Hmm. Your future? Well, I was, um, I was born and raised in Dakar, Senegal. And um, I came to the United States to join my family here, my brothers and sister were here and so I came to uh, pursue uh, a master's in mathematics or you know actually not really in mathematics uh, I wanted to pursue aeronautics but at that time it was too expensive to get into to pay for uh, that kind of degree mm. so since um, I already majored in mathematics in Senegal and economic management so mathematics seem to be the path of least resistance. Hmm. So, so I f continued my studies in mathematics in Florida. So when I finished my PhD, I came to, I, I got a job offer at, in a radiology department at UMass Medical School wow. in Worcester. And so I came to Worcester um, and was very excited that I had the position that I would be working um, in radiology because I was always interested in applied mathematics, how you could use mathematics uh, to solve real life problems and medical imaging was one of those problems. And so, uh, hey, we just met in Worcester. We just <laughs> That's <laughs> fascinating. So I'm sitting here talking to two doctors, one in math, one in molecular, molecular biology. biology. And you ended up writing about something perhaps unrelated, perhaps it's related to you guys. Do you find that your science and math backgrounds have a lot to do with what's in your book about divine, your, your divine gift of well-being? Do you think that, that your backgrounds, education, your educational backgrounds play into where you stand now? Do they support it? Or are they, con are they different? paths of thinking? That's a very good question. Um, I personally believe that whatever you do in life will always be used at some point in your life. Right. You may, you know, for, insta for instance, when I was getting a degree in mathematics, I never thought that I would be working in medical imaging and later on working in public health and global health delivery. Um, but I never knew that I would be writing, you know, co-writing this book and many other books with Dunia either. I believe also in the process of writing the book, there is this very magical element that plays into it, which is you're using the power of your heart, you're using the creative force within you to, to almost bring into manifestation the higher level wisdom that's out there. And so that process is, is just not logical at all, hmm. right? So the information can come to you very differently. Hmm. Now, when it's time to put all the pieces together, then your training, your logical mind begins to put the blocks together mm -hmm and then you start thinking about it from a very different perspective. But when the information is coming to you, you just use a very different channel to bring it. Otherwise, if you're too busy putting your mind into it, it does, it's no longer creative. Hmm. Because you, you will be judging the information okay. rather sure. than just accepting it and for what it is. limiting, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can't help myself because I, I find myself to be both intuitive and logical. And anytime someone starts speaking about a theory, I naturally try to analyze it mm -hmm. and yeah. logically break it down. Yeah. And yet, meanwhile, intuition doesn't always have a beginning, an end, and a mm -hmm. middle. It has a lot of stuff you just can't explain. And so, um, so would someone that is super analytical like myself, do you feel as though that would be a bad candidate f to read this, or do you think that would be fine too? There is no 
no. litmus no. test no. of no. No. logic versus no. intuition here. Not no. at all. Right. I think we, we, we have both. Exactly. We have both. Yeah. And uh, somehow we just accept that we're either one or the other. But we have, we are both logical and, and creative at the same time. Yeah. It's just accepting that we are. Right. Yeah. And that was the beauty of the process to find out that you can really marry these both sides, mm -hmm. creative side of you and analytical, at least for me, because I really, all those years studying, I was really not using my creative side. This was really uncovering gifts that I didn't know are yeah. there. And then bringing them together, that's why I don't see anymore, like I used to, separation between science and this kind of work, mm. right? So with, at the end, it's all one. Right, skills yeah. that you have, you still need, even in this work, you need some analytical mind. It's not that it's Absolutely. completely separated. Just to compose so a book together exactly. of this yeah. magnitude yeah. requires a lot of logical thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah you know. so I don't see separation anymore. Wonderful. At the beginning, we struggled with that, actually. Yes. Because we, for all those years, you feel that you have this label, you're a scientist, and that's all. Right. And for me, when I left that side, I mean, the job So behind. you did leave it behind? Yeah, I did. You're no I longer did. a molecular biologist? Right now, no. Yeah, I wow. won't go. <laughs> that so is it's a courageous. very hard. A very, yeah, I would say that it's very courageous. So yeah. four years, uh, maybe five years of, of doctorate degree, mm -hmm. and I'm sure four or five more as an undergraduate. All my life. <laughs> so you're probably looking at a decade yeah. plus of, um, yeah. of education. Yeah. That's impressive. And that was a big... So when we were talking earlier, why you know it took us so long? Because you had to reconcile right. with your past, with your choices, decisions, Probably and everything. Probably your family and too. Precisely. This is what I wanted to say. So many of our fears for both were coming from mm -hmm. that place. What would our loved ones think? How mm -hmm. would we be perceived? Our friends, or anyway, you know, what would people say? So you're a scientist, and now all of a sudden you left everything, and you're doing spiritual work right. right but you know I uh, I can't help but want to tell a linear story f with your so I'm now we're walking down the hill <laughs> and you're now me you're now talking so tell me take me from that moment mm -hmm. to the point where you actually are co-writing a book together mm -hmm. about spirituality how did you get from there to mm -hmm. here can you guys give me, you don't yeah. have to give me a like a play by play. I'm just trying to see how you guys came to the conclusion that you both needed to get something like this produced. Mm -hmm. Wow. It was, yeah, unless you wanna. No, perhaps you should go first. And then you can add yes. Because, yeah, so, um, since Worcester, I think, yeah, so as we met, uh, soon after that, I moved to Miami because of work, mm -hmm. right? So, um, he was living still. He was in Florida, yeah, came to Worcester, and then you went down to exactly. Florida, and he stayed in Mass? Exactly, oh, because wow. we just met, and because of work, I yeah, decided that I would move to Miami. Gotcha. It was the very beginning of uh, our relationship. So, And we were actually seven years in a long-distance relationship. Wow. And in those years, many things and challenges happened to both of us, different, <laughs> wise, that, uh, different ones that... I would say led to this work. I see. Right. So it didn't happen just like, you know, sitting together and right. talking and saying, you know what, it would be good that one day we're gonna start writing books. Never. Right, right, right. It even cross didn't cross our minds. So what happened for me, I would say what fueled uh, this spiritual path. First of all, I would say that since early childhood I was always dealing with fears. Mm. Right. They were really my faithful companions. Wherever <laughs> I went, I was <laughs> like really this scary kid, afraid of everything. Apart from that, I would say I was dealing a lot with um, lack of self-esteem, lack of self-acceptance, wow. and lack of self-worth, yeah, all together. So lack of self-love, let's put it that wow. way, right? And of course, there was this sense of powerlessness and um, not knowing that you have that power within to change things, mm. right? And when we don't know that, the easiest thing is to blame yourself and others mm. for what is happening in your life. And I was, you know, this was following me in adulthood, right? So there were different experiences, but I was seeing the pattern, what is happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this was one 
side, then the other catalyst that was also huge that led to this work was a surgery that I had that didn't go the way how it was planned and left me with many, I would say, not only physical wounds, but also emotional ones, mm. right? I'm sorry. And um, at that time, I, I was afraid of my own body. You know, I, did, I lost trust in my body. Wow. And um, I knew that, you know, you started actually, when these things happen, you start questioning everything, right? Yeah. What is all this about? Mm -hmm. Because you are in a very vulnerable place. Sure. That you never thought that something like this can happen to you, right? right? So that was one side that I had to overcome and find then again this balance in my body. And so this all helped that I started searching I for see. things. I see. And uh, then the next one that was also like a huge turning point was passing of my uh, father. So that was happening all like I would say within three, four years, wow. everything happened. And um, I really felt uh, that all these events made me ask like these fundamental deeper questions, mm -hmm. right? Why am I here? You know, what is my purpose? You know, um, what can I change to live this life differently, right? right? Mm -hmm. And um, I think this is, these are major events that uh, led to this, right? You had your different um, experiences, I guess, that... You, and and th during this, um, this tumultuous period that you're referring to, you were always in communication and um, able to kind of use e help each always. other and be that support yeah. system. Absolutely. It's almost as if you were like saying the things now that are in, uh, saying the things that are in this book mm -hmm. to each other then, and mm -hmm. but not as formal and, and processed and well, refined. Exactly, because at that time, we just started searching for these things. We didn't have the knowledge, right. and uh, this is where everything started, because you know that you're in a place that you want to help yourself, right? And at the same time, for me, it was also, I also felt that I was not really fulfilled at work anymore, that my soul was looking for something else, but many times, because of the outside voices, we don't hear that inner voice that is right. maybe prompting us to do something else, right? So, but then, since we need that, we, I knew that I want to find like a sustainable change in my life, mm -hmm. not just a quick fix, right. right? And this is how this, you know, I would say this higher wisdom when started coming, and it came just because we uh, allowed ourselves to be in stillness. To quiet the mind, to find the answers that we were looking. I think it's hard to find these um, answers or realizations when we are, you know, like immersed in all other channels and not being with ourselves, right? I mean, you're referring to a bunch of things that I think are um, important. Like, it, it sounds as though the answers that you found aren't necessarily ones that you found in a book or that you found, but sometimes just allowing yourself to mm -hmm. get the answers that are already within yourself and within your heart and soul. So, um, yeah, it sounds like, but there's a deep trust that needed to have happened between the two of you to allow for that stillness to, to take place and to be able to come to that, those, those conclusions. So, and for yourself from while she's in Florida, you're in Massachusetts still, and you're doing radiology at this point? At that time, I was, um, yes, uh, working in radiology. And uh, yes, I was, and I taught mathematics during that time period at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, and so take us through the process a little bit, kind of like Dunya did over the uh, course of a few years, yeah. to from the early 30s to now, and like how we got to this, <laughs> to this divine. Well, gift. I'm just gonna take you um, back when I was nine years old. So for me, it happened when I was nine years old when my mother passed passed away. Mm. So, and uh, that left me with a great void. Mm. Yeah, and I was very close to my mother, and. Uh, suddenly she vanished, right? And so my questions were, do we live 
am I just alone in this vast universe or do I have the ability to communicate with an outer realm? So can I still access, can I still hear her voice guiding me through life or it's just done? I won't hear her anymore. Big questions. Right. And uh, growing up in Senegal, Senegal, you would have, uh, I grew up in a Mus as Muslim. At the same time, I went to Catholic school as a kid. Hmm. Many of, of my friends actually went to Catholic school as well. And when I came to the United States, one of my best friends was a Buddhist, a Buddhist monk from Thailand. Hmm. And I spent a lot of time with him, talking about all sorts of philosophies and whatnot. The comparisons between right. Christianity, right, Islam, Islam, and he was also very well versed in many uh, religions. So we just talked a lot about the possibility of of us being non-physical, mm -hmm. right. So back when I was in Senegal, when I experienced that great void, asking all these questions, it's only much later in my teenage years that my sister, older sister, introduced me to, to someone, a gentleman who had a school then in Dakar. And the gentleman was teaching people how to visualize positive outcomes how to be in stillness and hear the voice within, how to basically draw to you the things that you want the most from life. So that teaching absolutely resonated with me because I was seeking solutions right. to, to my stress. I was looking for ways to help myself calm down um, and also to be successful in school, to deal with everything that's just happened to me mm. as a child. So, and, and I was just the happiest to know at that moment that I could do something about my stress, what I was going through in life. And I started doing it. I started uh, visualizing, being quiet, going by the beach and walking quietly, just quieting everything around me hmm. so I can be inside. And that was the catalyst for me, oh. okay? So coming to the United States, a new country, new language, no culture, I was excited, but at the same time, I needed to learn fast. I thought I, I thought so. Uh, I wanted to to just get to know the country better, the people better, the system better, so I can be successful mm. within the system as well. And all those tools that I had learned before coming here came in very handy, right? And it they helped me a great deal. So now. Coming to Worcester, um, after PhD, new job, faster pace, and the work environment, I, I also use those techniques um, during work uh, to complete projects, the same mindset, right? It's a mindset of what you can do mm -hmm. to complete things rather than making excuses for not getting things done. Right, the same kind of mindset. What can I do to improve my quality of life, rather than telling yourself that you're powerless? So, uh, while I was there, there was a time I needed to move on, and and so I took a teaching position. I was teaching mathematics for a couple of years, and at which point I began asking questions again. Um, do I see myself continuing down this path of teaching mathematics? It's great. But something inside me was telling me, there is something else waiting for you. Are you willing to take it? 
I didn't know exactly what it would look like and it turned out to be working in public health. But now in between my teaching, my, my teaching and taking the job in public health, I was unemployed, right? And so always a challenging time. Yes, it was a real it was a it was a challenging time I must say. I was tested in all sorts of ways because I felt worthless, you know. PhD in math, you were teaching, and boom, you're, you don't have a job anymore. You're looking for a job. You should know, you should have known what you're looking for ahead of time. Hmm. What's wrong with you? So you have that voice telling you that, you know, you should feel guilty for yourself. You know, you should feel guilty. You These should not are have gone. Very, society very. definitely encourages. It just right. feels as though that unless you have a, a, a lot of money or a lot of friends or a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. it feels though it's easy to fall into that rut of I'm a failure. That's you right. Know? But you seemed, from what your description, it seemed like you were comfortable with many of these coping mechanisms and tools mm -hmm. to provide guidance to yourself. So were you able to rally and get through this challenging time with those same tools? Yes, actually. Um, but also I had to question my own belief systems. Whether what I believed about myself supported this idea of success, well-being, living with greater ease, higher understanding, um, peace and harmony with yourself. So it was a very difficult time for me and, and so I began, literally, I began writing and I began asking the questions, where do I stand? I looked at every single area in my life, every single area, and without judgment, asking whether I was fulfilled in those areas. And I began to see the gaps, and I began to see the assumptions, and I began to see some of the beliefs that I was holding on to that did not necessarily support what I wanted in life, in the real sense. And uh, so yes, and then so for me, it was another tipping point in my life and the search never stopped, right? Mm -hmm. So from that, I was nine years old, experiencing that great void. I was provided with tools to help me go through life with, uh, with, I would say, with, with 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 a little bit of ease, a little bit better, right? Mm -hmm. So, but still carrying a great deal of pain and mm -hmm. emptiness, right? Right. Because at that time, I was still dealing with abandonment. You know, right? How come everyone had that had go yeah, away exactly? It doesn't. It didn't go away yeah. quickly. But those tools really helped me. And then another tipping point was unemployment well, made me also realize that I needed to change where things. Are you, where, where, where are you at this point in your life? How old were you, do you mind me asking? Oh, absolutely not. So I was, uh, I was in my 30s. Yeah, okay. yeah, Sorry, I was in my 30s. Now, had yeah. you, now you were mm -hmm. are still in, con in contact at this point. Always. Right? So during <laughs> yeah. these We've always periods, been in you guys contact. have been staying always in, in communication and close. So always. Got it. Yeah. So that's wonderful. So you did get me to, now Now you both have gotten to a point, you were saying you were unfulfilled, you were saying you were unfulfilled, you yeah. kind of, and then you ended up getting the job at the, the health. Yes, in public health, it was, I know you've yeah. told me some great stories. You've traveled the world, you've been asked by different governments to help disseminate. Oh, I mean, it's fascinating the type of stuff you get hired for. Definitely high level <laughs> gentlemen right here, for sure. Some great contracts and great consulting gigs, but, um, so tell me then when you guys kind of like had that aha moment, oh, we got, we got some stuff here, we got to share. Hmm. Was it something like you had both kind of come around mm -hmm. and felt good about yourselves again 
and understood that you conquered these challenges through this divine gift of well-being, this state of mind? Tell me. How it all came together. Yeah. When did you first uh, put your first mm -hmm. paragraph? Mm. Well, it started with filling up many, many journals, you know. <laughs> so this is how the introspective journals, um, journey sorry, started, right? So when we both started questioning and more we did of that and um, embraced that silence and going within, yeah, we wrote many things to the point that we started hearing this intuitive voice, this wise, loving self within more and more, speaking louder and louder. Usually it's a very faint voice, right? But we couldn't avoid that anymore and say that we are not hearing and the wisdom that was coming was like quite impressive, right? And then we decided that to it would be worth yeah. These, uh, these anecdotal or journal entries mm -hmm. and start to formalize them. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Now, is it instinctive for you? I'm guessing the reason why this is in a book format as opposed to remaining in your journal or in your own letters to each other is because you're givers. You're both givers and you want to help others. Is this true? Would you say this is a, an accurate statement? Well, yes, I believe we all are givers. Um, it's sometimes we just don't allow ourselves to give or to receive. We are both givers and receivers. And it's the, um, as much as we would like to give, it's also good to allow ourselves to receive. And I have to say that it's been very difficult for me mm -hmm. to receive um, from others. And... Um, but it's changing. Yeah. It's changing. I know where you're right. coming from. I'm a very <laughs> proud man. I don't like to have It's others. so much easier right. to give, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's exactly. That's just my to, instinct, too. But the right. universe doesn't work like that, right? It's right. give, receive in balance, right? Otherwise, how would we, if we don't allow ourselves to receive, right? Right. There would not be anything else to, more to give. Exactly. <laughs> to give is to get. Right. And yeah. so um, I feel as though you're receiving by giving sometimes. Precisely. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's as simple for me as, you know, seeing anyone that I help be happy and their happiness is a form of receiving for me. Absolutely. You know, so, but in this in book, though, I feel as though, and I think it's worthy of getting into it a little bit. If you don't mind, I'd like to just yes, read yes, a please, little bit please. from uh, my notes here. One of the things that you guys... Um, repeatedly talk about, and I think that the, the general nature of this book is it's mostly, uh, you can phrase it a, a multitude of different ways, a state mm -hmm. of mind, a philosophy, a spirituality. I think though, whether you say it's a state of mind or an attitude, it's encouraging people to believe in infinite options and life of abundance. Do you guys genuinely believe we individually have the power to determine our own destiny, starting with an optimistic outlook. Yes, yes, and yes. Look at these <laughs> smiles. <laughs> we don't need words. I get so uh, it's it's as simple as just starting with the right attitude. Is that well, it? yeah, you can go ahead. Mm. Here's the thing. So you have this world, right? Okay. We tend to believe that we are physical beings living a physical existence and using physical means to solve our physical problems. But what we often forget is that we are both non-physical and physical at the same time. You may even think of it this way. We are perhaps non-physical entities in a human suit. Now, as you look deep within and you connect with your heart, then you can connect 
with your innermost self. And this innermost self is wise, is loving. That's your soul. That's your spirit. And your spirit knows only unconditional love, wants you to live of life of greater ease, a life of divine purpose. Okay. So now, when you start from that premise, things you begin to see your reality from a very different vantage point. Not only from the physical plane that is Earth, this human being who's, who you think is not connected to anything else, mm. right? So as humans, we are connected to everything that surrounds us. And this is oneness. This is the oneness that mm. binds us all. So this is this unconditional love that binds us to all creation. Mm. And we have it deep within us. Okay? Unfortunately, we forget about this unconditional love that binds us all. Right? Now, you have wholeness. And what is wholeness? Wholeness means as much as sometimes we do not always love ourselves, we are whole. Each one of us is whole, unique being. We are almost like crystals, right? With different facets, we're reflecting light, the light differently. Mm -hmm. And that makes you unique, that makes me unique, that makes her unique. So there is really no competition right so we are unique individuals unique beings mm -hmm. right and so when we understand this then we begin to look at life very differently looking at ourselves as one whole unit each one of us connected to a divine purpose working towards something that has meaning that will that will help others right so basically bring this state of peace a greater state of peace and harmony so then you are looking into the spirit of oneness and cooperation as opposed instead of using your own personal will to conquer and destroy you're using your own personal will and aligning it with the spirit within that knows love and light. And as you do so, then you begin to become a vehicle, a sustainable solution for sustained growth and evolution. So this is, these are the cornerstones of what your divine gift of well-being is talking about mm -hmm. and you will find these elements in all subsequent books as well that's beautifully said that was a mouthful <laughs> 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 and uh you know i think that it's important to note that um when when reading something like this um it's not always going to be easy to quell the things that have continuously brought you down you know for example <laughs> You know, we talked about uh, several of the things that you guys challenged personally, that were challenging to you personally. And there will continue to be um, a lot of societal forces that will make you feel that you are not in connection with the oneness or a, a larger spirit. And you may feel like you're at the low end of the totem pole in society, that mm -hmm. you are well, uh, rudderless, without purpose. Mm -hmm. And so these are systematic and they're continuous and they're, I would almost say, constant. Mm -hmm. You know, these negative forces. Wouldn't you agree that there's, uh, you know, that there's systematic influences of negativity out there in the world? And, and what do you do? How do you continuously fight those negative influences? To me, this is... This is brilliant, mm -hmm. and I'm actually wondering how, and I, and I get it, mm -hmm. and I genuinely feel as though I could understand your sense of the soul and the and and the and and the the, the spirit being having this eternal wisdom. Mm -hmm. well, how do you fight those consistent negative influences upon you on a daily basis? 
Is there some type of uh, exercises or um, routine things that you recommend and suggest? Mm -hmm. Well, I would say it all starts first with awareness. Being aware who you truly are, right? Like it, Suleiman explained before that we are not just physical. And once you know that, you know that there is a whole spiritual family, whole universe that supports you, right? And this, instead of allowing these um, voices of fear guiding you, you know that there is this loving voice within, right? This, your innermost being that you can summon its power and your life is gonna change, right? So, but for that, one needs to be aware, right? right. Constantly of what are our thoughts, what are our emotions, what are our actions, right? Usually we don't, in this fast-paced life, we don't even ask these questions when right. we go through day, right? right? So once you commit to yourself, to your growth, that you know that you would like to change your life for better, then with commitment, you would start being more aware, for sure, right? And start pausing and asking and reflecting and nurturing this relationship with your true self, mm. right? Instead of being everywhere and listening to all the different channels. Mm. And for me, personally, what helps is to ask how I feel when I listen to something. If it doesn't feel good, it means that I don't need to stay there. Mm. If it inspires me or empowers me, then it means it's good for me. So this is how our heart is speaking to us constantly. Because only if it feels good and right, it means you are within your heart and you're there. So to give more importance to our inner world than our outside world, right? So you're, you're, you're evolved to the point where you've taken your fearful instincts and subdued them by listening to what, how you feel when you're receiving new stimuli or new energy, whether it be negative or positive, you are able to now quiet the fears? I think fears are always there, yeah. right? And we are constantly, like we right. were saying before, even coming here, it was, you know, right. like right. <laughs> we had to overcome, at least for me, my own fears to sit here. And this is already a victory for me <laughs> for being able <laughs> to speak about this here. So they are present, but it's just to understand the fears when they come, they come because they would like to protect us, right? And it's good, actually. Mm -hmm. Sometimes this is very good. The problem is when they become too persistent, right, in our lives, and then it can they can debilitate us, right. right? So then that's the time to kind of look at them differently. First of all, this is what I was doing before. I always ran away from them, right? And it felt good at that moment because I said, okay, I won't be doing that, so I'm not afraid anymore. Mm -hmm. but the fear would follow you like a shadow. The next experience is gonna come because our soul wants to grow and evolve, right? It's not by just skipping the experiences, somehow these lessons are gonna find you, right? Mm -hmm. So once we understand that, that we have to acknowledge our fears and love them for what they are, right? And we can look at them like children, right? They're just asking for our attention, right? Mm. And as we see them like this, with you know, under microscope of love, then it's easier to deal with them. You understand that this is my fearful side who wants to protect me, telling me, you know what, it's not safe to be, sitting, be here, sitting here, because maybe you're not adequate to speak about these things. Mm -hmm. You know, what makes you adequate, right. right? How do you think you're gonna be perceived? You know, what would people think? All these little talks that we have in the background, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. But then there is this other side of you when you pay more attention and when you tune into your heart that you would hear what is right. That this is a great opportunity. You came to this earth well equipped for all your experiences, mm -hmm. right? So you can do it, right? And only by doing it, we are growing, right? right? If we look back, like for everything that was scary, it was always so rewarding at the end. I, I think even the most challenging, challenging experiences in my life, looking back, I would always say, say that they were like, a gift of light that was wrapped in darkness. There is always something so beautiful that comes out mm. of them, right? Mm. So running away and allowing fears to guide our decisions, we would be really deprived of many, many 
experiences and magic that life is willing to give to us. This is true. I mean, I, I like that you phrase it in a way, light versus dark, and or light, you know, wrapped in darkness. You know, I think that ultimately, when you end up reading this, you do get a feeling of this is um, a... Uh, a very high-level book, an elemental book about good and evil, about light and dark, <laughs> about. But I've noticed something that's beautiful. You don't really ever negate other religions. You never really say, "Well, this isn't." You know, we don't believe in this anymore. We've passed that. You seem to have taken a um, the high road in that, <laughs> and not actually bringing up any other religions. Um, but the word divine is in the title of the book. Do you care to explain your vision of the source or divinity? Or is this off topic? <laughs> Nothing is off topic um, because it takes a great deal of introspection and looking at all aspects of your being to actually uh, be here, at least for me. I, I I struggled a lot with 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 different aspects of religion. I grew up Muslim and I went to Catholic school. Right. I read about you know Buddhism, Eastern traditions and things like that. But you really come to realize that all is one. And um, you ask me about the source. For me, when I was nine, again, back when my mother passed, on, passed away, I used to look at the stars and, um, and, and, and just imagine that she was there. She was communicating. She was that bright star talking to me. Mm. And when I was frightened, I would, I would just look at the stars and say, wow, she's talking to me, but what's that? Or when I'm distraught, I would go, I would take a walk um, near, in nature. Mm. I, would, I would just feel, come back and feel restored. Mm. Like all negativity would just suddenly leave me. Um, or you would just have a conversation with someone who loves you very deeply and you suddenly feel good about yourself. Mm -hmm. So, for me, at that time it was very simple. I didn't think much of it. I just felt there was love somewhere. Mm -hmm. There is this presence, whether I went to the mosque or hung out with, at the church with my Catholic friends, no matter where I all went into or, or where, whether I was hiking or not, I always felt that presence. I felt there is this universal presence and I am a part of it. Mm -hmm. I am a part of this very breath of life and that breath of life is love. Mm -hmm. So. It just resonated with me. So I never, I, I just knew it's there. It's hard to explain. Right. It's, 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 you know, it's not one and one equals two. No, it's just a knowing, a, a deep, it's a deep sense of knowing and belonging. And, and this presence that's just, you feel loved and accepted unconditionally. So this is how I define well, an attempt mm -hmm. to define the source for me. That's beautiful. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of people that will be reading this that come from different backgrounds and different mm -hmm. walks of life. And, um, you know, I think that all the major religions that you refer to, they have their own philosophies, but this mm -hmm. doesn't counter it. Nothing I've heard counters any of this. It just talks about about tuning into that deeper wisdom and understanding that we are not just fleshy bodies on this <laughs> planet. Mm -hmm. We actually have something greater than that. We are part yeah. of something yeah. greater. Mm -hmm. um, and not to 
you know, talk about myself, but my logo is the beacon, right? Mm -hmm. And the beacon That's is beautiful. light. Precisely. And, and so, and there's something that somewhere along the way I realized that mm -hmm. I was a part of something bigger. That's right. And that I was part of that light. Mm -hmm. And that if I could make that light brighter for others, mm -hmm. that I'm also mm -hmm. doing my part. That's and right. And I'm doing that it's giving. So and so, you know, here we are. Here We're we are. We're all a bunch of beacons. That's why we are here. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's so bright in here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> well, I mean, I am so pleased to hear this, and, and, and I've actually learned a lot. I know we've talked in the past, but I've learned a lot today about uh, the book, about you guys, about your your relationship, your struggles, where you came from, where, where how you got to be here. I am curious. I haven't read any other books, so what is next? I feel like we've got some big things Brewing, <laughs> and uh, do you care to share what the website entails? What the uh, other books you allude to are referring to? Is this the beginning of many, or what are we looking at here? You want to share? Okay. <laughs> well, I can start with the book, the next book that is coming soon, hopefully. <laughs> do we have a it's, title, or we have you? a title. Yeah, okay. it's Who Am I? Who Am I? discover the inf your infinite being within. So it goes more in depth about this connection uh, with this loving wise being within and how your life can change. And actually it speaks about how to live um, in alignment with your heart, mm. right? So meaning how to open your heart, how to commit to yourself, how to forgive yourself, how to speak your deepest truth mm. instead of what we are used to usually wearing all the masks, right? So we would please others and be accepted. So how to get to that point? And um, I think we share a lot of tools and techniques in that book that would help one find that connection and embrace that um, powerful being within wow. and change your That's life. That's exciting. Yeah. And is it in that same similar format? Uh, an ebook that we'll it's be able to be get on. That one is going to be com. for sure in both uh, formats, yeah, as yeah. it comes uh, okay. out. Yes. That's wonderful. Yes, yes. yes. And I, uh, I do remember <laughs> talking to you. There is some things brewing in terms of consultations and some services that are ongoing to help people. I will say, just for the <laughs> record, you guys are very lucky to have each other. <laughs> Thank right? you. Uh, and, and, you're, and you're both beautiful people with great, you know, and great smiles. Great, and you, you're both smart. You're both physically beautiful. <laughs> but not everyone has all these beautiful oh, things that they've been given and started out with in life. And so one thing that, for example, let's say, for example, that you hadn't met her mm -hmm. or she hadn't met you and you didn't have each other as a soundboard or as a reassuring comfort zone mm -hmm. where you could be still and, uh, and listen to your own heart mm -hmm. while someone's waiting, uh, patiently, you know, willing to non-judgment, you know, give you that support. Now, could you have gotten to the same place you are now without each other? Uh, I would say no. I think um, um, I, I would say no because I've just received so much support from her and um, and this is something that's priceless. Yeah, yeah, I can say the same, yeah. I yeah. I don't think, yeah, it would be the same. This work would not be born, I believe. This work would not be born. We wouldn't be sitting wow. here. Not yeah. in this kind of way, for this sure. Is your, this is your babies. <laughs> you, can, you can say Begin that. Begin with. You can, yeah, you can say that. Yeah. So beautiful, mm -hmm. so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, before I get choked up and emotional over here, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. excited to to uh, to hear more. I, this, to me, this was a good read. I was able to digest this book in two sit downs, right before going to bed, quietly enjoying <laughs> this, and it was it really was profound. Mm -hmm. And then I got excited, and I already have the fortunate uh, state of mind to be. In similar state of mind as yours, uh, a life is abundant. There's millions of great options. There's there's always solutions to problems, mm -hmm. and to tap into a deeper wisdom that is timeless 
and outside of your body, I agree with. But then I could see somewhere along the line that if I read this and I have this great state of mind at the moment, mm -hmm. I could see where it could retract back into those negative influences, the vices you may have, that weakness you may have of not having a significant other there. So uh, this is where I, my biggest uh, question, and, and I think that your next books next book alludes to how mm -hmm. to work on that and how to have that ongoing the discipline and the mm -hmm. ritual to kind of continue to have the right state of mind to be able to empower yourself it is ongoing work um, um, I still have lots of negative thoughts <laughs> <laughs> it's human but I think uh, negative thoughts are not they're not really bad for you, or negative emotions aren't negative, uh, they are not necessarily bad for you. They're just reminders that you are temporarily misaligned with your true self, right? So if you can use whatever negativity you're experiencing as a tool to bring you back to self, then great, right? We're not, we're not really meant to push them away because they're a part of us. We're, we're light and darkness at the same time. We are tears and laughters at the same time, joy and grief. So we're, it's, it's the sum of all these emotions, right? All these experiences that make us who we are, right? right. And as we accept them for what they are, it's easier said than done, then we we begin to see the higher perspective and therefore begin to see more good and and have a little bit more peace right a little bit more but it's ongoing work it start it uh, it starts with awareness and it continues with commitment and definitely being aware enough not to judge what you're going through so but again it's it's I it's think, just work. I think those are fair comments and very realistic and um, pragmatic. And mm -hmm. I think that it's important sometimes for people to not have any delusions of grandeur of that a single, you know, 60, 70 page book can um, change your life forever. It can, mm -hmm. but it does take ongoing work. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an important realization yeah. Yeah. and that this. I invite everyone that's watching today to get a hold of this. Go to lotc.com and download it today. Your divine gift of well-being <laughs> by Suleiman and Dunya. I appreciate being here. Is there anything else you'd like to tell the audience before we go? Have we covered the, a lot of ground today? Well, um, this is a win for us because <laughs> it's taken us how many years? Three years for yeah, to accept the invitation and to be here. Um, Deb extended that invitation three years ago and uh, I first said yes to it and I realized, whoa, what did I commit myself to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. But so, it took um, us so long. it's just wonderful to be here and uh, wonderful to be able to break the ice and uh, despite all resistance that we had to put up with. Yeah, all this <laughs> We are very grateful that we were able to break the ice in a circle of these wonderful, loving friends. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm Thank excited you. for the next invitation for the next <laughs> book. I'd be happy to uh, talk about that as well. And so my, e my, my email inbox is ready. <laughs> 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you.